Now, next uh, the characteristic of population we are supposed to write consider here is read here is population fluctuations. Now, why we are supposed to study fluctuations here is like when we are studying totally from the beginning we are studying size, density, natality, mortality, biotic potential all these right. The size of the population after attaining a certain state of carrying capacity, certain stage of saturation point. We have, we have studied a term called as carrying capacity right. Now, what we said carrying capacity a stage where there is no more there is no more further growth rate there is only death rate and there will be decline but there will be no hike ok. So, that is called as saturation point reset. So, when we are when a particular population is reaching to a certain saturation point or when it is reaching to a carrying capacity we definitely see that there is a fluctuation in the density of the population. What will happen? You start from slow and you shoot up and immediately you stop. So, what will happen? Either you will see more of the population or it wants downfall of the population. So, the population density will definitely show a sort of fluctuation. Now, here these changes occur either due to the changes in the physical environment right. Now, these fluctuations are here, here of three types here. First one is called as seasonal fluctuations. Second one is called as annual fluctuations third one is called as uh, eruptive fluctuations. Now, what is seasonal fluctuation annual and eruptive? As the name itself indicates seasonal fluctuation means a fluctuation which occurs on the basis of seasonal, seasonal fluctuations on the basis of changes in the environment. In uh, for example, you will see in those plants which have short life cycles and uh, seasonal variation the those plants which have breeding seasonal breeding. So, this type of plants or this type of animals we show uh, seasonal breeding or we depends on different seasons their growth and decline everything depends on seasons. So, in that plants uh, also after reaching a saturation stage we will see the fluctuation and that type of fluctuations which are occurring in the seasonal form or due to the environmental changes then that is called as seasonal fluctuation. Now, next one is annual. Annual as the name it's a, itself it comes it is controlled by the annual differences in the environmental changes means yearly once total overall 12 months one year in the environment the characteristics changes in the environment will lead to the changes in the characteristics of the population of that particular area. So, that any fluctuation which is occurring annually in the environment which may affect the characteristics of a population due to achieving the saturation point then that type is called as the annual fluctuation examples you can see in the birds. Uh, you can see in fishes and insects ok. Here you can see the abundance of mosquitoes and uh, abundance of mosquitoes lying in a particular seasonal area. Some cases in uh, in a whole year you will see in some season you will see the presence of more mosquitoes light uh, ants will be there. In some season you will see the occurrence of more frogs right that will come under seasonal and in annual year wise changes environmental changes that may affect the birds, fishes and insects. Now, eruptive, eruptive fluctuation means if they are occurring in response to any obvious factors means those fluctuations which are not I, not occurring either seasonally or not annually and they are not occurring at uh, regular uh, intervals or in response to any obvious factors those are called as eruptive fluctuations. So, these are the fluctuations uh, which will be these are changes due to the changes in the physical environment physical interactions with the populations or both. So, this is about population fluctuations next uh, most important is ninth one is mm, the mo next most important is population dispersal population dispersal. Uh, this is also very important. Uh, in this, we will turn according to uh, we will talk about three terms here. Those are called as e migration, immigration, 
and migration. Three terms we will talk. Okay. Now, what is population dispersal? That is more important here. You will get questions from this four terms here. Now, population dispersal means dispersal. Dispersal means what? Moving away or throwing away or leaving away from the particular area where we are living. Okay. Now, dispersal, dispersing from the original place. Okay. Now, in terms of population, population dispersal. What is population dispersal? For example, we are living here and because we, uh, we want something we are uh, unable to sustain in that particular environment, we are being dispersed from the own uh, place. We are move, dispersed to the new environment so that in order either it may be for the food, shelter or for the survival. Right? So, the dispersal depends on the availability of the natural resources or the availability of the environmental conditions may also lead to the dispersal of that particular populations. Now, here this dispersal uh, when the animals are dispersing they are for the food, shelter and survival. Now, when if it is in a case of plants there is also a concept called as plant dispersal. When it is occurring, when there is overcrowding of the plant population, when there are overcrowding of the plant vegetation, then the plants also show some sort of dispersal. Okay? So, uh, dispersal occurs in human beings also, in plants also and in animals also. In plants it is because of overcrowding, in animals and human beings for the food, shelter and survival and further growth. Okay? Now, with this regard, we have three concepts here which are very important for your uh, uh, multiple choice or questions or for your exam point of view. First one is E migration. Here the importance is E. If you take out E, then that is migration. Migration means moving from one place to other. That is difference. Right? E migration. What is meant by E migration here? E means without. Means migration from original place to the outside place. From our country to other countries. From one area to other areas. Okay? E migration is a process where it is nothing but the movement of a particular population from our area towards the outward area. For example, in general when we talk, we are E migrating from one population to the one country to the other country. Why? Because jo uh, job sources are there, we go there, we earn there and we, we try to inherit there. Right? So, E migration is a process which occurs because of the overcrowding of the plants. What will happen? These plants will get outward dispersed outwards of their own place and they will go and mingle with the new environment and try to interbreed with the other species of the plants and try to inculcate the hetero develop the heterogeneity of the heterogeneity and adaptability of that particular environment means moving away outwards from their own environment is called as e migration next is i what is immigration immigration process we have heard what is immigration here? Immigration means letting others to come inside. Letting other plants and animals to come into our environment. Letting others to come and survive in, uh, in it is the inward movement of the organisms in the population, in the population, into a population. Uh, what will happen because uh, inward movement of population means because of some changes, uh, more heat, more summer, some birds will come some animals will come, some birds will take a long drive and come from Australia all that to India. So, seasonal immigration is there. Immigration will help in increasing the density of the population. The outside people will come, they will adopt to our environment, though it is a plant and animal, they might immigrate from outside to inner environment, they settle down, they adopt to the environment and they show their growth. Okay? So, that will also increase in the, increase, uh, in the density of the population. So, this is called uh, helpful in the increase in the density of the population. Now, when we come in a concept of e-migration and immigration, it is both are called as one-way process. These both are called as one-way process. Means what is happening? E-migration, we are going out of the our environment. Immigration, we are sending we are taking in from the outside environment. These both take place constantly and they are helpful during the uh, occurring during particular seasons. Okay? Because some animals will have uh, heat sustainability, they go back to there. Okay? Now, next is migration. It is called as two-way process. A migration is called as two-way process. What is two-way process? Migration of 
प्लांट्स एनिमल्स और इट में दो इट में भी और इट में भी ह्यूमन बींग्स माइग्रेशन मीन्स एट पर्टिकुलर टाइम दिस ऑर्गेनिज्म और प्लांट एनिमल्स और ह्यूमन बींग्स आर गोइंग to outside places or outside the country and they are staying there they are growing there and after a particular period of time they come back to their original population and it in most cases this migration of the population is occurring only for three criteria either for food shelter or survival so for seasonal time they will go for a particular time period they go there they survive they earn again after a certain period of time they come back so that basic migration either it is in plants animals or human beings it is occurring only for three reasons food shelter and survival and after a period of time uh, migrative movements are common in all the birds reptiles birds all these are seen in the migratory movements so these are the basic three types of population dispersal this will be asked immigration e migration or one way process migration or two way process where at a particular periodic departure will be there of that particular individual and after certain time it will come back to its original population and it is mostly seen in all the insects birds reptiles all these organisms it is seen okay this is about the population dispersal and these are the few characteristics or we can say that these are the basic characteristics of a population when you are talking in terms of population ecology we have to consider all these characters 1 to 9 Uh, one to nine, and we on the basis of this we can calculate or we can estimate the population. Uh, we can take into consideration the, all these characteristics and study the population ecology of particular individuals in a particular area. Okay.